Oh, what's up, everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. I'm with my boy, Stuart. Hey, how's it going? Oh, why would this be an impossible part? It's about to get All right, so this is gonna be a cool, short video. We're gonna show you a cool process. But before we get started, I wanna invite you to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, put your comments down below, and guess what? Based on what you comment, you might see an answer in a future vlog, which is exactly what we're doing now. All right, so in the last 24 hours, somebody actually asked about dovetailing small parts and about how small you can actually dovetail parts. And then I was walking past my boy Stuart and we had a cool part with a tiny dovetail that pretty much all the shops failed at. This part looks simple, but because of the dimensioning, the true positioning, how the datums come off, the parallelism and all of that, it actually gave a lot of shops trouble and they couldn't manufacture this part. So it's all about process. So I figured since we're talking small dovetails and a cool technique, I figured I would just introduce my boy Stuart and let him speak on the process, all right? So it's not one of our biggest projects, but at the same time, we wanna to speak to parts that we're making every day so we can show you the process. Some of you guys are gonna be like, did it, boom, I understand. And others is gonna be like, oh, I get it. That's an awesome technique. Let me bank that information and then use it when I get a similar part. All right, so Stuart, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, I'm gonna get on the other side of the camera. You're gonna hear my voice, but he is the star. Boom, let's do this. Yeah, so real quick, this is a simple looking part but because of the tolerances, because of how much material is getting pulled off of it, one of the important things is that this part has a very critical flatness call out. Right across that top surface, right? You got two thousands, right? Not crazy, but tight. Then you also have a perpendicularity call out to this face. From datum A, which is this one. From datum A and you have a true position call out on the location of this hole. So all of these things all combined with the material, how much is being cut off, where the tolerances are, and how they work with each other actually does make it a tricky part. Because we're also making so many, we have to think of what is the best way to not only make this part, but make it as quickly and accurately and as fast as possible. A lot of other shops couldn't make this part. So they would go to the engineer and they would ask to have the drawing changed, to have the tolerance changed. And what they would do, they would take the material and rough it all the way down. When they did that, because so much material got removed from this side, it would bow and bend the other side, causing them to lose their flatness tolerance. And you not only have flatness, you also have a parallelism call out on the other side. So how we actually hog all this material out and machine it is we first take our material and we cut a 50 thousandths dovetail into the bottom. And we have it 50 thousandths for a very specific reason. We want the dovetail to be as low as possible. So that way there's as little material as possible on the back of the part when we go to do our flatness cut. So then these guys right here, these are the plates with the Mighty Bite Pit Bull clamps. And the step is tiny right here, right? Yeah. So we take our material with our 50 thousandths dovetail and we actually slide it in to this very small slot. Because we have this dovetail, now we can hold less pressure onto the part. First thing we do is we clamp it down so that way we can go through and rough the part. What we're gonna do is stay 50 thousandths away so that way we can relax the material. There's usually built-in stress whenever you have material going to a finished part. What we wanna do is relieve that. When we pull all that material out, it'll bend and it'll move and it'll contort the part. After we've roughed it 50 thou away, we'll actually go in 
and we'll relax our Mighty Bites by unscrewing them and then retorquing them to a much lighter torque. Once we are barely holding onto it, we'll then come back in and machine all of the critical features. We'll take our time and come in and ever so slowly make sure that we kiss each surface and know that that feature and that that datum is perfectly true. So once we take it out, we have 50 thousandths on the back, which is what we held with our little dovetail. We then need to cut that off, but we need to be very careful and hold it as perfect as possible. So what we developed is we have a soft jaw that is as enclosed as possible to the part. You can see we sunk it down as much as possible, making sure that every tiny inch of the part was held so we had the most clamping surface. So you got like a T-slot right here, so the bottom of the part can just yep. sit in this pocket right here. Yep. And then the bottom, the bottom's been machined, right? The back that's hitting the vise has been machined, and this is perfect at a 90, so when it sits in, the bottom surface over here gets indicated in absolutely perfect. Therefore, when you cut the top, it brings in the parallelism perfectly, right? Yep. So once we indicate it, and once we know that the jaw is close to flat as possible, we'll rough the top to five thousandths away. Then we'll relax the jaw. We'll actually unclamp the vise and then reclamp it at a much lighter torque. What this does is it relaxes the part and relaxes the material, so that way we can get our perfect flatness call out. Once we relax the vise, because we've only held it just ever so carefully, everything is perfect with our flatness, our perpendicularity, our parallelism, all the necessary callouts to make this part perfectly inspect. All right, Stuart, thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, so there is a clear example of how you take an impossible part to some shops and actually machine it to print on time, under budget, boom, 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 consistently, right? because you have the right process and technique in place, all right? So I'm not trying to talk bad about anybody else. I'm just saying that there is a way to machine almost anything. So you gotta actually look into it and you gotta figure it out, right? And it's about that fixturing, okay? And if you wanna learn more about fixturing, check this out. On the Titans of CNC Academy, we have a teaching series that teaches you the art of fixturing. All right, so Mighty Bite gives you all the clamps at cost, and basically you can download the prints. We're currently doing tutorials that will teach you how to actually make all of these fixtures, so you can use the same technique with the Mighty Bite Pitbull clamps as we did over here, all right? Just another way that we're helping to educate you guys and take the trade to a whole nother level. Boom. Boom.